Let's do it. Greg Erball. <laughs> I love the way he says that. Hey, don't forget, don't forget John Tomac. Save the ozone. They're extreme mountain bikers. Really? Kamikaze downhill is the hills like this. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. There it is, extreme mountain biking. Look at that big V. <laughs> Booyah! Solo thrill. Ooh, let's go. This will be good. We've been wanting to document some of this crazy stuff oh, we do. Oh, oh. This is my mountain bike. This isn't a normal bike, but this thing will take all the abuse you can hand it. You know, we each have our own style. Airball is my image. <laughs> I don't think it was from the shower. <laughs> I'm pretty serious about uh, my job of being the mountain biker. <laughs> I raise pigs. I raise havoc. I'm married with children. I'm single with toys. I'm a wild one. Wild one. Wild one. Wild one. Wild one. Wild one. Get to ride all over the world. Get to taste different kinds of dirt. Every time I'd intake, why I get so much dirt in my mouth, I just like spit it back out. You know, this way we don't have to take iron pills. I just believe that the more work you put into something, the better results you're gonna have. You gotta go out and put in your chamois time. Chamois is the thing that keeps you rear end padded. A lot of times when I'm racing, and I'll just start giggling to myself. <laughs> Whoops are like uh, pimples on the earth. Living for the times. But once you learn how to manipulate your bike, the possibilities are endless. It's like I'm in a drain. I just left from the bathtub. I'm going to end up at the sea somewhere, you know, and everything's coming by you like this, and you just have to go with where the terrain takes you. There's always something coming at you. There's always something to try to get around. And in order to improve, you have to push the limits. The main thing is riding with half your tire off the edge, but not going over it. You need 100% concentration to push your body to its maximum the whole time. Sometimes when we're following each other and something throws you off, you just end up in a pile at the bottom. Go, I think that was a little too much. You get sketchy and taco your wheel. Ringer. That's what happens when you crash and then you stand up and you think you're in France. Well, I don't think we'd just go 60 miles an hour into a blind turn. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Let's, let's try and hit it. Be smooth. Hit it. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Once again, that is. What's up, homie? It's one path. Only the surface changes. In winter, snow blankets the Rocky Mountains and the light powder is captivating. The clean air remains the same, but as the snow melts, these mountains take on a different characteristic. Handlebars replace ski poles, fat tires replace skis. And what is it that captures so many? The speed, the challenge, the fitness, or the enchanting beauty? Today, we use a road less traveled and attempt to answer those questions as we take the mountain bike ride of your life. Cycling made its premiere on Wide Road of Sports in 1964 with an event called Cycloball. Since then, we have seen bicycling events originate from velodromes, the streets of Paris, and the flatlands of the United States. With endurance only an Iron Man could have. We've also seen great athletes such as Greg LeMond, but today will be a first. 
The Sawatch Mountain Range forms a spectacular backdrop as we stand on the side of the mountain here in Vail, Colorado. As most of us are aware, Vail is one of the top ski resorts in the entire world. But today we're here for a different sport, mountain bike racing. The event is called the Ride of Your Life, and the winner's going to take home $10,000. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Beatty, and I've stood on the top of this mountain many, many times covering ski racing. Today, though, the competitors are going to be going downhill, not only 45 miles an hour, but all the way back up as well. And working with me, man who's been all over this mountain on his mountain bike, Bart Connor. Now, Bart, seems like every local in the valley here has a mountain bike. This sport is really exploding. And as a matter of fact, the sales of mountain bikes has totally revitalized the bicycle industry. Last year, more than 60% of all bike sales were mountain bikes or all-terrain bikes. Okay, now, Bart, the recreational mountain bikers kind of cruise around and have a great time, and it's relatively safe for them. But these competitors, I mean, this is dangerous. They all tell these horror stories going over the handlebars and everything. And let's take a look at the type of athlete that's attracted to this sport in the first place. Typically, they're fitness maniacs. They have immense aerobic capacity and incredibly powerful legs. Secondly, of course, they love the thrill and the danger of ripping down the side of the mountain seemingly out of control. Let's take a look at three of the athletes that are our favorites here. First of all, there's Ned Overin. Ned is the current world mountain biking champion. And then there's Mike Closer. He's a local here from Vail, a former ski racer and a former world mountain biking champion as well. Rishi Graywall from the tradition-rich Graywall bike family. Rishi's brother, Alexi, the Olympic champion in 1984 in the road race. The 15-mile course consists of three loops, each connected to the start-finish area. The riders will climb to almost 11,000 feet. On the descent, they will encounter a muddy slalom similar to downhill ski racing. Then it's the fastest portion of the course. After a four-mile climb, the races have only three miles to the finish. The orange areas on the map represent redundant areas. The men's field consists of 24 of the top riders in the sport, and as you can tell by the course description, the ride of your life combines the most exciting aspects of mountain biking, hill climbing, downhill, cross country, and dual slalom. More than enough to challenge the toughest of competitors on the ski slopes of Vail. Let's take a look at the field with Bart. In addition to over into gray wall enclosure, watch for Tinker Juarez, as well as Tim Rutherford. He's always a threat. Look for Rishi Graywall's brother, Ranjit, and top Canadian, Andy Tout. And they're ready for the start. Ready? Bob, in riding this course, as well as talking to some of the riders, this race is quite a bit shorter than the normal mountain biking race, which is two to three hours, so the start is crucial. You want to get an early lead on the straightaway here going up to Closure's Climb. Now, although the riders are fresh, if they're not acclimated to the nearly 11,000 feet elevation, oxygen debt can be a problem. They call it Closure's Climb after Mike Closure of Vail, who is competing here, and helped design the course. In first place is Tim Gould of Sheffield, England, known for his huge lung capacity. He's going to need it. And second, world champion Ned Overin from Durango, Colorado. The men are strong, and so are their bikes. They've certainly gone through a lot of changes over the years. Back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, they were called truck bikes due to the wide white sidewall tires and chrome fenders. The 60s and 70s saw the road bike flourish with its thin tires and streamlined body. Well, the 80s saw the return of the so-called clunkers, but with high-tech additions such as space-age lightweight materials like titanium and front suspension systems made from springs and oil-filled shocks. And, of course, the nearly two-and-a-half-inch wide knobby tires. Bart Mine has knobby tires, but it sure doesn't have front wheel suspension. And the riders have almost reached the top of the two and a half mile climb. Now this is a really steep section of the course and the riders have a choice. They can either drop it all the way down into their granny gear or their lowest gear, or they can simply dismount and walk or carry their bikes. Now this aspect of mountain biking is called cyclocrossing. It's very popular in Europe. On this section, it's just more efficient to carry your bike than attempt to ride it up that steep hill. And they're almost at 11,000 feet in altitude and those lungs have to be burning. And with all the snow that's melting, not only rocky, but it's very muddy as well, and they're very concerned about getting mud in those gears. Bob, if the gears get jammed, they have two options. They can actually ride through mud puddles to try and clear them off, or spray their gears with their water bottles. And as they reach the highest point of the course, there's three Colorado riders. Richie Graywall from Aspen first, David Wien from Gunnison in second place, Ned Oprin from Durango is third. Next major test will take the competitors to a specially set slalom. On the ski slopes at Vail, Colorado, the first major climb is behind them, but there is no room to relax. It's a slalom course, but instead of snow, there is lots of mud. 
And on this section of the course, it's about a quarter of a mile long, and it really is muddy. The riders need excellent bike handling skills. And it's interesting, even in the mud, these guys will be reaching speeds up to 30 miles an hour. They've run slalom games before, not only with their mountain bikes, but also on snow. Most of them are very good skiers. In first place right now is reigning world champion, 35-year-old Ned Oberin. Dave Wiens has moved into second, and Rishi Graywald, who was in first place, has moved into third. Let's take a look at how Graywald lost his lead. Rishi Graywall got caught leaning a little too far forward, hit a hole, and did what they call an endo, a front flip over the handlebars. Luckily, he recovered really fast. But that's all part of mountain bike racing. They just get up and keep on going. The leader is Ned Oberin, known as the king of mountain bike racing, due to his extraordinary fitness. He asks what it takes to do well in the sport. That's one of the great things about mountain bike, is it requires a great deal of fitness, a great deal of aerobic fitness, and also, you know, some kind of complete body power to, uh, you know, motor up the steep hills and, uh, and also control the, the rough downhills where, you know, you're using a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different parts of your body, your arms, shoulders, back, and of course your legs. Oberon still is in first place, but right behind him, Rishi Graywall has moved into second and goes by him right on this downhill portion. It's hard to believe after that fall early, usually a rider would get conservative. He is really attacking on these switchbacks. Well, bombing the downhills is something Graywall likes to do, but Bart, it only takes one small pebble and it can knock you right off your bike. And Graywall told us the best downhillers are just a little bit crazy. Well, he's certainly living up to his rebel image. It also takes a lot of courage to go flying down a mountain road like this. To get a better view of what it looks like to the riders, he installed a point of view camera in the helmet of Tim Rutherford. He's in the middle of the pack. And this really is a pretty rough downhill ride. It's important for the bikers to keep good balance and don't give in to the temptation to oversteer or overcorrect. Keep the arms loose. Front wheel suspension on these bikes sure helps too. Ned Overton has dropped to third place. Fourth is Tom Rogers. Fifth is Tinko Arez. And sixth, Andy Tout. We've talked about speed all day. Let's find out just how fast is fast. Okay, as you can probably see, the riders are coming around this right-handed turn. This is the fastest section of the course, lying down. Now, how fast are they going? Well, we're going to find out right now. 42 miles an hour. Pretty fast down a rocky mountain road. Not as fast as a downhill ski racer, but a whole lot faster than your average Saturday afternoon bike ride. At age 24, Rishi and his older brothers, Olympic road cycling champion Alexi, and Ranjit are perhaps one of the strongest U.S. bicycling racing families ever. We asked Rishi how he became so proficient on a mountain bike. Always when I grew up, I was riding a BMX bike and stuff like that. So um, you can teach yourself quickly, but usually it's most of the good guys have been doing either BMX or motocross or something or mountain bikes for a long time. So you get kind of used to what's going to happen when you're, when you're sideways, that sort of thing. <laughs> We've had a tough uphill and a very fast downhill, and now a different challenge. It's a downhill single track through these beautiful aspen trees. This is the most technical portion of the course. Here, the riders veer off the traditional paths. Speeds are much slower, but it's extremely side hill and muddy. Not unusual for the racers to either slip out or have to get over a tree that's fallen in the way. This is a section where good technical riders will try to make up time. The leader, Rishi Graywald, as he crosses one of the trails used for skiing in the wintertime. The beautiful village of Vail, Colorado, right behind. 25 seconds behind Graywald, Ned Overend will be back. The riders are three quarters of the way through the race here in Vail, Colorado. It's a long, relentless climb from 8,500 feet all the way back to over 10,000 feet. <laughs> Graywall is really paying the price. You can almost feel the pain. He's 25 seconds ahead of Ned Overin. Third place, David wins a 20.